It's about a week later now. Here is a new computer sitting under my desk. I have done one more thing to this, which you can already see right there. I have installed an additional air intake fan in the side panel. There is an air filter behind that grid in the case, and then the fan is behind of that, so no more dust getting into the computer. And that fan is blowing cold air onto the graphics card, which is good. I was going to do one more thing, and that is to install a secondary hard disk drive in here, but unfortunately that's not going to happen. See, this is quite a cheap case, and as it turns out, two hard drives spinning in there at 7200 RPM is just too much for this case. It really starts buzzing and vibrating, and it just gets so incredibly noisy, I couldn't do it. It was so annoying. So, unfortunately, the external hard disk drive on top of the computer does remain. I was hoping that I'd be able to integrate that into the computer. I was going to take the new computer as an opportunity to finally get rid of Windows 10 and all of its annoying habits, ranging from automatically installing junkware without asking for your permission, to spying on you so that Microsoft can create a personal profile of you that they can sell to advertisers. So I installed Linux on this computer. Over the past year, I had been experimenting with various different distributions of Linux, and the favorite one was Linux Mint with the Cinnamon desktop. So that's what I put on here. Initially, I was quite impressed with the Linux. A lot of the programs that I'd been using previously were also available as Linux versions, and for those programs that were not available for Linux, I found pretty good replacements. For example, I replaced the Adobe Premiere Pro with a video editor called Caden Live, which did work quite well. But unfortunately, as time went by, more and more problems became apparent with Linux. Some of them had just to do with the fact that Linux is not the same as Windows, but some of them were also clearly bugs. The most annoying one was that I just couldn't get the thumbnails to work. No matter what I did, I installed, I uninstalled, I reinstalled a bunch of packages, I just couldn't get the thumbnails to work properly. And just imagine you have a folder filled with 200 video files that your camera has just numbered, and you have no thumbnails, so you have absolutely no way of telling what is what it does get really annoying really fast. So after a week, I pulled the plug and installed Windows 10. So here it is, back again, the annoying Windows 10. I will continue experimenting with Linux on other computers, but the main computer I do need for university work, as well as for a bunch of my other hobbies, so I have to have this working, and I cannot spend hours every day trying to fix another problem that I ran across. It just gets annoying really fast. But, of course, the advantage is I do have my Adobe Premiere Pro back, and that's what I'm going to uh, go to now, and I'm going to edit this video, or I'm going to finish editing this video because, uh, as you can see, most of it is already done. And before I leave you, maybe I do have a little bit of a benchmark for you. I have already rendered a few videos on this new computer, and it goes more than twice as fast as it used to. In fact, with all my super high quality rendering settings, Rendering videos goes faster than watching the video in real time. So you render a two-minute video and it's done in, oh, about one minute 45, something like that. 
So that's pretty good. And it turns out the 32 gigabytes of RAM are not too much because during the rendering two-thirds of the RAM are occupied with Adobe Premiere taking up a whopping 14 gigabytes. Thank you for watching.